guys so this video is about addition and subtraction of sinusoidal quantities that is space uh, using space diagram so we're going to use one question that we need to explain how we can add and subtract sinusoidal quantities so welcome to my youtube channel this is prof one so let's get started so now we're going to look at how we can add sinusoidal quantities as i said so we have this question given to us that is we are going to use this question to understand how we can add and subtract sinusoidal quantities so now let's read the question together that is four circuit elements are connected in series across a sinusoidal alternating voltage given by e 110 sine bracket of omega t plus 30 degrees the instantaneous voltage across the three of the elements are given by this. So first, we need to know that we have a source, and the source is giving us the instantaneous voltage across this. So with this, it's kind of harmonic question, but with it, they're asking us to express V4 in the form of A sine omega t plus beta. How do you go about this? So please make sure you watch this video to the end. Now, so um, with the phasor diagram, for you to understand this, you always need to understand the phasor diagram. Now, the phasor diagram this in the Cartesian plane, right? It is similar to when you come to complex numbers. And also in um, basic mechanics, it's somehow similar if you understand the concept of complex numbers. So, by the way, I'm not going to use complex numbers, but I'm going to use application from complex numbers. Now, we know that E is the alternating voltage given by 1, 1, 0. So, it means that the E is giving us this, this, and this, and even the voltage 4. So we know that from here, E is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4. So with this concept, we're making V for the subject. We're going to get V4 to be equal to what? E minus V1 minus V2 minus V3. So this is what they're going to base on to solve this question. Now, we are going to represent each of the V on a phasor diagram. I'm going to explain something to you. So with V1, when we take the Cartesian plane, how do you represent this? The angle given to us here was zero. So it is on the positive x-axis. And if you want to write this in a complex number mode or yeah, for us to do it to be 30, and we have this, and the angle is zero. Now, this becomes the modulus, and this is the argument. Now, the argument given to us is zero. That's why I'm representing it on this line. So if you want to find this in an x and y component, it will be 30 sine zero and 30 cos zero, respectively. You understand? So let's take the, this is for V1. Let's take V2. V2 is acting at an angle of 60 degrees. So it means that this is an angle of 60 degrees. So with this, it will be 60. We have the what? For us to convert this in the X and Y component, we're going to get 60 because the angle is making with all the positive S component. So we are going to get 60 sine 60 degrees and 60 cos 60 degrees, respectively. But when you check the last, um, the V3, it is at the negative side. And with that one, when you are converting it, since it is negative, we're going to get negative 30 cos negative 30 degrees. Now, note that with cos, cos is an even function. So even negative, that is cos, negative 30 is the same as cos 30. Note that. But with a sign, it's an odd function. So you cannot get the same result for each. That is, we cannot get 30, that is 30 negative. Okay, so 30 sine negative 30 is not equivalent to 30 sine 30 because sine is an 
odd function. So let's move on. So and with the e that is the main source, it is positive. So it will be 110 cos 30 degrees and 110 sine 30 degrees. Let's get started. So what I was saying is that for us with this, we are presenting it in the we have the modulus and the argument, right? So this is similar in what complex numbers. So this represents the modulus, and this is the argument. Is it 110 says 30 degrees? Yeah. So we have the modulus and the argument. So we've represented because v4 will be equal to from here. You know, v4 is equal to what e minus v1 minus v2 minus v3. So that's what we've done here. So we have. 110 says 30 degrees minus 30 says 0 degrees. We represent it in that form, right? Note that this is the what? The modulus and this is the argument. So now, after we've done that, what do we do? We try finding it in the S component. You know that we try adding it in the S component and try adding it in the Y component. So let's do it in the S component. With S component, note that S component from here, we know that when resolving this in the S component, we're going to get 110. Okay, let's use this. That is the E. You get 110 cos 30 degrees. That is for the S component. You can try that. This is mostly S component. That's S component is for cos. So since it's in a positive S direction, it will be 110 cos 30 degrees. And similar here, that will be 30 cos 0 degrees. And here will be 60 cos 60 degrees. And here will be negative 30 cos negative 30 degrees. Now, because it's in what? When you check it, it's in the negative quadrant. That's the negative S component. So, it's in the negative side. That's why we had negative. But first, as I said that, when a cause, cause is an even function. So, cos 30 is the same as cos negative 30. Note that. So, when you simplify this in the S component, you're going to get, when you simplify, you're going to get 55 root 3 minus 30 degrees because cos 0 is 1 minus 30 minus 15 root 3. And when you do that correctly, you're going to get 9.28203200. That is for the X component. Now, we then for come to the Y component. With the Y component, it deals with sine. So with the Y component, you're going to do this in the sine form. So that's what we've done here. So we are going to do it 110 sine 30 minus 30 sine 0 minus 60 sine 60 degrees minus 30 sine negative 30. So with that one, as I told you that sine is an odd function, that's why we had negative here. But this is an even function. So it's the same. So when you do that correctly, you're going to get our y component to be 18.03847577 g. The reason why I brought j is that this in applied electricity, mostly we don't use i to represent the imaginary, but we use j. You know that in complex numbers, as you know that in complex numbers, we have A plus I, B. And always, the I goes with a sign. That's why we have our J here. Because J is for the Y component with those with sign. That's why we had the J there. So in applied electricity, we don't represent it by I. But we rather use what? J. Note that. So with that, when we are done with this, what do we do? We are finding the argument in the modulus. As simple as that. So it's similar to complex numbers. But I'm applying complex numbers here, but I'm not using complex numbers. Note that. So we try finding the what? The modulus. That's the magnitude. So we therefore find the square root of, we square this, square this, sum them and find their square root. And when you do that correctly, you're going to get 20.82651 for the modulus. And with this similar one, I'm going to use it for what? The argument we're using tan that's the tan inverse of what the y over the what the x and we'll get what our mod uh, our argument to be what 62.7710 degrees so now we can therefore represent this in the sinusoidal alternating voltage so when you do that correctly we are going to get that our v4 which is the this is the modulus and this is the what the argument. So when you do that correctly, this is the answer you should get. 
because we find the models and the arguments and we've signed them up and since it's alternating it will be sine omega t plus the angle given to you right as simple as that yes yeah that's it so with a phasor diagram it's similar to complex numbers complex numbers can be written or can be drawn in what a phasor diagram that is using the what the cartesian plane as compared to basic mechanics that one we can use phasor diagram but that one we use phasor diagram we resolve the forces in the x and y component it is similar to this one the alternating voltage that's the sinusoidal alternating voltage right for the phasor diagrams so now the b is asking us to find the rms value of four since we have the argument and the modulus we are going to use the modulus to find the what rms value of v4 and from this formula you know that the rms value of this one will be what the peak voltage over what root 2 and the peak voltage is what what we had here which is 20.2865 so we substitute that inside the formula and we get what 20.2865 over root 2 and when we do the simplification what we have is what 14.34 volts as simple as that yes so you need to know how to draw each of the alternating sinusoidal both in the phasor diagram is very simple. You can try more, take more questions and try representing in the phasor diagram. Yes. As I said, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you like the video. Please like and comment. If you understand anything, just comment in the comment section and I will reply to that. Thank you very much for watching this video.